welcome to the lounge of Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and also what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. And I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest today is Angela Hughes, who is co-owner of the Luxury Travel University and vice president of sales at Trips and Ships Luxury Travel. So welcome to the lounge, Angela. We're so excited to have you here. I know. I'm so excited to be back, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, for those listening, um, Angela was on, we had a webinar with her on the same topic because this is, you're a guru in this topic. So we are excited to have you back in this uh, podcast. But before we dive too far in, I'm really excited to talk about just luxury travel and getting in the yeah. space yeah. and all of that good stuff. But can you first just share a little bit more about yourself and just how you got in the travel industry? Yeah, I actually started out as a kid and I, I feel like everybody knows that story, but I was just a young 14 year old delivering brochures and, you know, stacking brochures and delivering tickets to people. It was my parents agency and so grew up in it, but I also have a master's in travel and tourism and hospitality and taught on the um, professional level on the university level and have been running agencies my whole life and working as, as an independent consultant, basically with my family and then took over the business. So no longer the vice president anymore. I'm now the owner because <laughs> my dad aged out into dementia <laughs> and at 83 finally left. And um, we switched hands January of 2020, which was not the best time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to right make before. a change. But we now have 40 um, independent consultants that work at Trips and Ships. And we work in the premium and luxury space. and I feel like the world, it's just a perfect time to be in travel. I know people say it's the worst time, but I, I am so optimistic and feel like it's the best time to be in travel. A hundred percent agree, especially are you seeing um, the big boom and what, what did that look like for you and your team? Did, when did you start seeing that happen? Yeah, well, we saw it really coming right out of the shoot in October of 2020. I felt like we were going to maybe just hit rock bottom. I actually even took a personal loan out of my own account because we didn't get any government funding. And I thought, Ooh, this is getting deep now, you know, because you still have subscriptions. I'm still paying for Travify and a million other <laughs> subscriptions that we love. And I, it was kind of getting grim. I was like, this is not turning around. And I made a big investment in the Africa market and went straight there when it opened and making that one single decision to dive in and really invest in Africa in, in a crucial moment um, changed the course of my business because we booked our first African safari six weeks later and they traveled. And then we just, we just dug in and I've been there seven times this year with a variety of different groups and people. And, and we really took off in the Africa market. And I say that the Africa market really saved us actually all of a sudden by January, we were up and we were making profits while people were still down. And I'm, I'm optimistic. We're hot. We're hot right now. That's so. incredible. How did you decide to go after um, the Africa market and that, that niche there? Well, it was the one thing that was open and it was the one thing that looked fairly safe to dive into um, in terms of COVID because we knew we'd be in the Serengeti and Tanzania and we wouldn't have to necessarily be around a lot of people because again, the landscape looked different a year ago than it looks now. Nobody was really traveling and it was a lot of travel shaming going on. And we just thought, okay, we know we know the metrics that luxury travel is hot and where are people going to spend their money? Maybe outdoors in an environment where they're a little more isolated and just made kind of a, a mental switch in my head that Africa is going to be our game plan. And we went heavy and strong with that. We, we were loving it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. And it's such just a good example of just looking at the landscape and seeing right. where you can, you know, find the right thing at the right time. Right. And that's, that's really cool. And so what would you say for, I know there's a lot of travel advisors who I've heard so many stories where they started um, right when everything was shutting down, or they're also just kind of pivoting at this point. So luxury travel is obviously, that's probably the top one. I mean, a lot of people that it's a great great niche to get into just it's just luxury you're going to make higher commissions so what would you say um for agents who are either just starting out or trying to pivot into that industry what can they start doing now to really start making their way into it well i really think that's a great question but first of all i think that you need to really differentiate you're not in the luxury travel market you're in the market of people and you're targeting people who buy a premium product or a luxury product and those are two different things 
when people come to me to privately consult through the Luxury Travel University in my, cons- you know, in my private consulting business for advisors, I often hear that, like, I want to sell more luxury travel. I want to be making more. I'm done with the low end people. Well, you got to have a plan. First of all, a business development plan is so crucial. I just spent the last hour talking to a ton of agents um, that I trained on business development plans. People, you need to know where you're going. It's not enough now to say, I got into travel because I love traveling and now I want to sell luxury. That, that's not a game plan. You got to have a strategic plan that's going to set you apart and your tone is going to be heard online of what you're passionate about. And you're going to influence people to buy, to buy something that ultimately changes their life. And in the premium and the luxury space, people are spending a tremendous amount of money. And so they need to feel confident that you're the right person to sell that product to them. And so there's a lot of things that have to take place from having a strategic marketing uh, brand, or I'm sorry, a strategic business development plan to um, marketing funnels and strategies to just being a passionate, amazing person online and telling your story. (laughs) No, it makes so much sense. And, and I'm remembering too, just from um, our webinar last year, when you were talking about different things that people can do and how, or what are some tips that they can do for either marketing wise or networking, or what are the, the big things that you believe like you need to get started on that right now? Well, I hear a lot of people saying I rebranded in 2020. And what that really translates to is I changed my logo, maybe my name and fixed up my website. There is so much more to that whole rebranding equation. Okay. And one of the, one of the things is looking at that marketing funnel, because at the top of the marketing funnel, you are sending out messages through social media, um, through LinkedIn, maybe through a newsletter, a landing page. And that's where people spent a ton of time working with coaches online, developing those types of things. And then what happened? Okay, I don't, I'm still not attracting anyone. Well, you need to move them through that entire marketing funnel. So they're moving to the next step. Like once you see some attraction from any of them, if they comment on something and say that's on my bucket list, you've now moved them to like the second section of that marketing funnel where you're going to start like um, creating a relationship with them. And you might start dripping content that, that if they said Africa was on my bucket list, then I'm going to start like, catering information towards them about Africa and creating a relationship, maybe more of a dialogue tell, I actually move them to a place and maybe that's going to happen in 2022 when they actually want to buy that safari. And then after they buy that safari, now they become my marketer. Now they're telling their friends and now they work for me, so to speak. Now they're, they're referring people to me. So I want to move them clear through that funnel. And I just don't want to get stuck up here posting all day and watching webinars and you know, spending just, I always say like, there's so much information out there where we're always searching, but never, (laughs) never finding kind of in, in travel, you know, you want to get to the conversion stage where you're actually making money in this and not just working around the clock. And then the second thing I think is really crucial that people don't do is they don't invest in their business. They don't invest in the systems and the tools. They don't invest, uh, invest in the virtual assistants, um, in the subscriptions that they need to be successful. And I always hear them say, oh, well, in 2020, I cut down because, you know, I wasn't making any money. Guess what? That's a time that you want to like ramp it up. And, you know, we were, we were upping all our subscriptions and, you know, I wasn't about to cut out Travify because that's such a, you know, a critical piece of my, yeah. And and I talk about Travify all the time when I'm on the road speaking of just like that, that needs to be a critical piece of everybody's business development plan because, you know, now I see now I'm your marketer because it converts people to, to buying. And so investing in the tools that are going to make you successful and in the virtual assistants and things that are going to cut down on time so you can do what you do best, sell and be passionate about your products. So. No, that's well, thank you real quick on the Travify shout out. <laughs> awesome. That is it's so true though. It's word of mouth and it always, always works very well. Um, what would you say? Um, and this is probably a tough question because I know you're really busy and every day looks very different. For example, she will be speaking at uh, Travel Marketplace East uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, but what does your day-to-day look like? Like how much time do you spend um, doing a little bit of marketing, doing all using your software tools, uh, your workflows, and then also just just converting and selling. Yeah, well, I'm I'm definitely full time, and um, 
So I'm not a hobbyist. And I think people that are successful in travel treat it as you wake up and you do certain things every day because consistency is super critical to closing the big deals. And so my, my day really looks like this. I spend at least an hour or two on social media and looking at my, my target audience. And that doesn't mean I'm just aimlessly like floating around Facebook, which I am, but you know, I'm strategically thinking like, what am I going to post? Um, and engaging with people. That's huge because you need to be engaging with people. If you want return, you can't just be posting. You can't be just, it's all about me. I need to be out engaging and you need to be authentic about that. I generally love people like people. I want, I want to be in people's life. I'll shoot them messages. I'll text people. And so people often say like, I don't want to spend that much time on social media. And it's a waste of time. But for me, that's a huge marketplace. LinkedIn and Facebook is a huge buyer's market for the premium and luxury space. And I need to do my due diligence there every day. Now, posting doesn't always have to be um, marketing all day long. I tell my story all day long. Uh, you know, if I'm with my kids, I tell my story. And I would do that anyway, because that's just my personality. But I encourage people to tell their story. They should be telling their story because nobody wants to just get on and see me pumping out a hotel after hotel or deal after deal. That, that's so boring. They want to see about my life. They want to know if they could trust me, if they like me, if I have integrity, if I have standards and morals and you know what my family and my personal life looks like. And, and then they're going to be more more inclined to want to work with me. And then the other part of my day, I use a, a CRM to like with the best of them. I look at that and my clients are so targeted um, for different products and things that we're always seems like we're just shifting groups of people. We don't lump our clients into one single mailing list or one. I haven't broken down into my 10 teachers, my 20 families, um, my, my hundred CEOs, just my own clients and, and looking at how we can shift those around. And then of course, there's a, a portion of the day where we're booking. And then because I own an agency, there's a big portion that I'm just working with my own advisors, moving them up and helping them level up as well. So it's constant, you know, it could be paying commissions. <laughs> it could be, you know, is it, it, being a business owner um, is hard. Sometimes I don't even think it's worth it. And sometimes I think maybe I'd be better as a solopreneur, but I generally love what I'm doing. But I think the key thing for me now at, at my age and where I'm at in my career and in my family life is I'm really looking for more freedom. I mean, you've got to look at what your end game is and what your goal is with this. I want to spend a tremendous amount of time giving back. We developed a ton of humanitarian trips over the last 10 years where we gave back and that took up pre-COVID, probably six months of my year, like in the humanitarian industry, where I wasn't working so much on my business. I was spending more time with that, but also creating freedom in my own life. I don't feel like, if you feel like you're slaving every single day, then now you're just an employee of yourself, you know, and I don't want to wake up and feel like I don't have any freedom in my life. And sometimes I have to remind myself of that because coming out of COVID, I mean, there really hasn't been a, a wasted day, but now I'm waking up and I'm saying to myself, wait, I can create my own day, you know, and I don't have to do the grind 24 seven. And I shouldn't be doing that because now I'm just an employee again. You know, I want, I, I want to wake up and be free, <laughs> you know, and, and create the life that I want to live. <laughs> so, and that should be the end game, I think. Yes. Here, here to that. Yes, that's, yes. that's awesome. So mm -hmm. one thing, oh, I love all of that too. Um, just a great outlook to have um, in business and in life. And I think that's also why the great thing about travel advisors that all travel advisors that I meet and connect with is that they love travel. So there's the passion, but it's also yeah. creating your own place and your own where you can have that freedom and choose what you do with it. So that's really, really awesome. One thing that I want to ask you about is how you spend your time on social media. So do you do um, like Facebook ads or do you, do you focus on those at all? And um, same with LinkedIn. Yeah. So my strategy really is in groups. I've grown over organically 7,000 people following me in the luxury travel, social media and marketing group. And then I have each of my advisors, I help them develop groups so they build their own business. Pages really, Facebook pages have really lost their, their power if you're not consistently buying ads there. I do think it's important if you're going to work in the luxury segment 
to digitally target those types of clients. And that doesn't mean you go into a Facebook ad and you're saying, oh, I want the rich and that live in this zip code and they buy luxury. <laughs> you know, you need to be really narrowing that down to the types of behaviors that they have, you know, what type of iPhone they use, maybe a zip code, do they golf? Like what clubs they might belong to? Because now you're targeting an individual and whatever your ideal at, avatar is in those digital ads you can't just lump it into like rich people in this zip code <laughs> and shoot it out there i do think digital uh, facebook ads are i i'm personally not running any ads right now um in fact right now i'm so maxed out on business that i haven't even been sending out my newsletter because i've been traveling so much and speaking so much that i really can't take on any personal business right now for myself um on top of what i've already got because we and this is what last year looked like one month we'd be up, next month we'd be down, one month we'd be up. It, you know, we're sailing all through the summer coming on strong. Then August and September, Delta variant hit, and we were, I, I'm seeing flashbacks of 2020 happening. And then now all of a sudden we are just, you can't even take a breath. And so I think that you have to be consistent in what you're doing, but you have to make sure that you can also provide the best service. And so I, I've actually stopped sending out my newsletter the last couple of weeks. Um, Actually, I haven't sent it out for three months because I, I honestly can't fit in more clients right now. And I'll tell my I'll tell my base like, hey, right now we're we're overloaded <laughs> and that yeah. creates kind of a scarcity, too. And then more people come to you. But I'm not even telling them that this year. I used to do that before. Like I'm only taking on so many clients this year um, and I'm only going to take on the clients that work with me now. And now if they don't meet a quota or if I don't want to sell them, I'll just say, you know, we're not the right fit for you. <laughs> That's that's really cool to get to that point. As we were talking about that one time in um, in another uh, podcast, just about how mm -hmm. there is if you create that scarcity and having that, it's just amazing. So, um, no, really awesome there. And what do you think? I think that I, actually, I think any agent can use that strategy because when I mm -hmm. initially start a Zoom call with somebody, I'll always say, "Hey, let's have a ten minute Zoom call to see if we're the right fit for each other." Because that, that automatically puts them in a scarcity mindset because, and that makes our agency feel a little more elite. Like we are not desperate for your business. And at that point, then they start thinking like, right, am I the right fit? I hope I'm the right fit. I want to work with her, or maybe I don't want to work with her. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't feel like anybody needs to feel desperate that they have to take all the low hanging fruit in the world to start a business, no matter what level they're on. That's, that's a really good tip. Really good. You know, um, just, I like that just positioning it that way to say, and let's just make sure we're the right fit, you know, consultation call to see. And, um, mm -hmm. that's really cool. And so when you were, um, back when, cause now that everybody, they usually find their way to you, um, naturally or new clients potentially. Yeah. Um, but back when you were finding them or, or when, um, members of your own team, what are some strategies that they apply that they've seen working, um, like networking, what types of things have they done to find that clientele? Yeah, of course, pre COVID networking was always huge. And I feel like if you're working in the premium and luxury space, you need to be in locations that you're going to meet people. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed because my husband's in orthopedic devices. And so I was naturally dining with a lot of orthopedics. And so that, you know, that's a lucky fit, but I'm telling you, your plumber could spend just as much money. <laughs> and so, you know, just getting out and working, um, you know, there's a lot of rich people who are overspent. Um, and I just had doctors who spent on a carnival cruise the other day. I mean, we made $80 commission. I wanted to cry. <laughs> so just because you have um, higher end profiles doesn't mean they're always going to be spending the money because, and I would never discount, discount kind of the millionaire next door because he might be living very modestly and, um, have way more to spend, you know, than, than the big hat, no cattle person on the other side, so to speak. But, you know, now I, I use a lot of strategies. I use a lot of texting strategies and we, we created this kind of during COVID. Um, well, pre COVID actually, because in March, 2020, when everybody was canceling, we sold a river cruise group by just texting people at Travify. This, this is a Travify testimonial right now. And guess what? She didn't pay me to say any of this. <laughs> No, but I never I did. Story because I created these Travifies because, you know, we probably created them in February for a Christmas market land tour. And then also for a river cruise in the spring tulip festival. And all of a sudden COVID hit and 
you know, it was really taboo to post on travel right then. Everybody's canceling, everybody's paranoid, nobody's buying. And I literally took the Travify link and I just texted it to like 20 people that I thought would go on that river cruise. And we sold nine cabins at the end of March, 2020 on an AMA waterways. And now, and it's been pushed forward twice. It's not going until 2022, but while everybody was canceling, we were selling. And we did the same thing with the Christmas market group and sold eight or nine couples on that Christmas market group. And that was with Trafalgar and that ended up getting pushed forward too. And people are sitting on credit right now, but I, I love the idea of texting a Travify idea to people and going, hey, you might like this. We did this, we just did a wellness weekend last week, the House of Aya. And as several of our girls were successful just texting the Travify to people and saying, hey, take a look at this. You know why? Because texts get open 100% of the time where emails are less than maybe 28%. So I promise she didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> Oh, that's so, oh my gosh, that's amazing. We'll have to put like your referral code or something in this. Uh, I, I need a referral code. So referral yeah. Code will use. yeah. Make sure you use a referral code. You'll get yeah, 10% yeah. off. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's nice. <laughs> now that is really cool. That is such a good idea. I've never heard that um, marketing idea of texting yeah. instead of the emails. Well, and because I'll give you another idea because um, that we just did, and this was really successful. I, I had targeted it down 20 families that usually travel during like a break. So coming from the Northeast, people travel in February. And um, I made something on Canva that just said, hey, it's time to book your school vacation. And literally just made a square, you know, Facebook post type square Instagram um, size and just text that to 20 people. I did 21 actually, the 20, nobody responded. And the 21st person came back and said, oh, I'm so glad you texted me and reminded me. We want to book beaches, Turks and Caicos. They confirmed it that day. And all of a sudden I was $1,200 $1, richer. And so it's so when you're you're narrowing down and kind of targeting and, and you're specific with people, then you win. You need to be showing up, though. You need to be showing up on social media. You need to be showing up in text. You need to be showing up on in, in groups before people are are buying. You need to show that authority. I, I lost one. I'll tell you a sad story. I just saw one of my clients from that family list at the Grand Velas in Los Cabos. And I was like, wow, who, I hope that it wasn't, you know, an agent from my neighborhood, my old neighborhood that's only been in business two years that sold that, you know, or whatever. Cause I'm like, how did I, how did I lose on that? And I answered my own question. I didn't show up. I didn't reach out to her. I didn't text. And now she's at the Grand Velas. And, and that taught me a valuable lesson. Like I didn't show up. Somebody else showed up. Yeah. yeah. It's so, such an important thing of just showing up. And with that, you can just be yourself because like you said earlier with your social media, I mean, you'd be posting, you know, things anyway that are just opening yeah. into your life and you're building a relationship. And yeah, I love that. The text, man, that's really a good idea just because it's, um, it is better than it. If an email, it's more likely like, oh, we'll just not respond. But a text, you kind of feel like you need to respond, especially if you know the person. So if you know the person, it's kind of like, I need to respond to that. So well, every single time but, we run a group, we'll build a Travify and anything we'll build a Travify and just share it with a million people on. And I always get into a texting relationship, even with my highest end people from the get go, because then I, I can open up that door to just getting more personal with them. And, you know, you don't know if emails are getting read. You don't know if they're opening them. Yeah. Yeah. You really don't. Yeah. I love that. It's such good ideas. Thank you for sharing yeah. those. Mm -hmm. Letting us a little insight in those. So a question I always like to ask everybody, and I know we don't have a crystal ball, but what do you think the next six, what are you anticipating basically for the next six to nine months of just the business travel industry? What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Wow. Loaded question. I yeah. know it's very loaded. <laughs> I think it's going to be sizzling hot, Yes, but I think we're in for another two years of rocky road so people need to frame their business and protect their business for that i've got millions of dollars on the book at our agency now and in my own in my own list of clients millions of dollars and i can't be confident that any of them are going to travel in 2022 yet and it's scary i read things i'm like oh great vienna's back on lockdown you know amsterdam's doing a partial lockdown you know is that going to affect our river cruise in april the, the deal is you can't worry about that because if you're sitting back wondering if the world's going to travel again, I'm telling you they are. And somebody else is selling it while you're waiting for things to happen. And other people are experiencing it. I mean, this year alone, let me give you the rundown. I've been to Galapagos, Greece for a month. I've been to Turkey. I've been to Italy. 
I've been to Tanzania three times, Uganda twice, Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, Caribbean multiple times. And I just have been to Mexico more times than I ever want to go to Mexico. <laughs> and so, and I'm telling you, the world is moving and, and people are traveling. And every time I go, I'm like, wow, we're, we're in for it. And I feel like just a wave of enthusiasm that we're going to come back stronger than ever, but it's going to be in the higher end and the premium, premium and up market all together. And I think it's going to be really tough for families to afford travel, especially when we have COVID tests looming. I spent $800 in COVID testing in August. I mean, that that's just undoable for a lot of families that are already stretching to get on vacation. So, and just like you were saying yourself, like, it's still scary if you have a job and, you know, we're seeing breakout cases where people are getting COVID and they're you know, I hate to say, yeah. it, you didn't say. And so you gotta, you gotta plan ahead if that's the case. And so I think for the next two years, you're going to have to write it out and, and analyze your risk and decide if that's for you. But the great thing is in the luxury space and in the premium space, a lot of people are okay with that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you plan it out, you get that insurance. Cause that's vital for you right. know, this, just in case if you do get stuck and all mm -hmm. that, um, a random question that I just thought of is, did you do any, did you do a lot of domestic trips over the past couple of years or just like, uh, planning for over, over COVID? Um, actually yeah. I don't book a ton of domestic. Unfortunately, I'm like more in the exotics and mm -hmm. the safaris and those types of things. I did do a lot of domestic traveling myself though. So, um, because my husband works all over the East coast, and, you know, we've been out to the West several times to see family. And so I've been in all of the major cities and it's amazing to see the development and the change in, in Boston and New York over time. I just came from New York last week on my way home from South Africa two weeks ago. And wow, you can't get into a restaurant there without a Vax card and you can't get into a Broadway show without a Vax card. And that's really changing. I was just on the news last night with Disney, um, well, with um, Fox, Fox 35 here in Orlando and talking about the Disney vaccination and that's really going to change how families travel. When you take a premium uh, piece of uh, of market share, like a cruise it, that families travel on and kids aren't vaccinated, the landscape, it's, it's going to be altered for years now with that. Yeah, so. it's so crazy. But we find ways. We'll find ways, you know, live, work through it and, and live through it. And um, out of all the places that you got to travel to um, internationally, was there any ones that stick out that you're like, they did everything so right? Or just, I mean, was it probably a lot of them? Or was there any that you just loved going to during this time? Yeah, well, it's interesting, like Tanzania, when I first there, it first went there in October of 2020, they didn't believe in COVID at all. Like people weren't wearing masks. They said there was no COVID there. And then I went a couple times after that, the president died of COVID. And so now they're high on COVID alert and you're paying $180 to be tested in the Serengeti and $80 upon arrival. And I'm like, wait, we weren't even doing this at the height of this a year, a year ago. So, you know, regulations are changing everywhere. Um, but I think for me, okay, I've been to Italy so many times, but at the last minute, we booked it Monday, we left Wednesday, we had zero plans, just jumped in a car when we got there. I was just designing it as I went because I know, I know Italy so well, but it was amazing to be there in August and have really zero people in key destinations like Portofino on my anniversary. I felt like I had won the lottery because I was like, I don't know if you'll ever see a place like Italy this empty again and just you know, to be the only people at the pyramids. And so it, I feel like it's been so remarkable to be in the Galapagos and have it so inter, uninterrupted, you know, and um, I, it's just such a great time to travel that I hate, it's kind of a catch 22. It's like, I hate that people are coming back to travel, but I know what it represents that they're not traveling because I've yeah. been so spoiled. <laughs> It's a win-win. That's what I, I've been thinking about that too. You know, it's, it's nice that, because especially um, some of the international places getting to go out and that sounds awesome to be, to experience yeah. such, you know, things like that. It's really cool. Yeah, it'll never be that way again. And I mm -hmm. hope it's that way again, but it, I, I feel like it is important that we have scaled back tourism, just being on the academic side of things, um, because we are experiencing such a big piece of overpopulation in tourism prior to COVID that was really destroying cities. And I mean, I was in Croatia and Italy in August of 2019. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to kill myself, me and 5 million of my closest friends. And then what a difference two years later was. And I was like, oh, 
th this is how it should be, but we, we've ruined, you know, there's so many, uh, tourism's ruined so many things. All the things. Well, it's kind of like um, what immediately comes to my mind is in Venice with the, it, the water got clear and uh, just there's fish swimming in it. And they're like, yeah. we've never seen this before. Certain yeah. types of fish. It's just incredible. It's very interesting. And, and we noticed that in Tanzania because we were really one of the first to return. And so there weren't a lot of Jeeps in Tanzania. And they were saying the animals were so relaxed. And all of a sudden we look around and a hundred giraffes just came trotting over this landscape. And I'm like, oh my goodness, wow. like it's just us. And, you know, a hundred of our favorite giraffes. <laughs> trotting across the landscape it, it, it's amazing the world is, is spectacular oh that is so awesome yeah. I love that well this is a perfect time to pivot because I have I didn't tell you that we were going to do this but we have rapid fire questions that okay. are just really fun so I just have I have four of them for you and I'm really yeah, curious just I mean just what you've talked about just in the past um year and a half is really awesome but yeah. here's here's a couple of them okay so the first one is, is what is your favorite destination you've traveled to? Oh, that's so unfair. <laughs> I know it's really hard. <laughs> it's a... I, I think Prague holds a big piece. I'm, and I'm actually headed there in a couple of weeks. So I think Prague's one of my favorites. But that's so unfair because there's so many great places in the world. I know. Every time I, every time I ask that question, they're like, why would you ask me that? Um, yeah. <laughs> So so here's the mindset I'm in, because I would say Tanzania and I would say Japan because I live there. You know, there's so many great places. That's, yes, that's so many. Question. Yeah. So what about this type of spin on the question? What do you think is the most underrated destination to visit? I think Poland is an underrated destination. I feel like it's emerging. It's coming to. Um, and I think it, at, it has a lot of spectacular landscape and the history alone, just with the Jewish and the Holocaust, there's a lot of dimension going on there. And I think I think we're gonna see Eastern Europe really move in the next couple of years. I've actually noticed that. I've seen that mm -hmm. and it's like in incredible. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And um, another question here is, what is the best meal you've had when traveling? Oh, geez. <laughs> had another hard one. <laughs> I can tell you a lot of meals that I haven't liked. <laughs> um, yeah, and the funny thing is, I'm not a huge foodie, but I'll tell you where I feel like the best food is. I, I spent four weeks in Greece, and we did a lot of northern Greece this time, clear up, uh, you know, in the Macedonia area and so forth, clear up to the border. And northern Greece, I think, and they were just named like some of the top food in the world. And I was so shocked. I was like, who knew? You know, I had a lot of Mediterranean food and everything when you're in Europe and so forth. But I'm telling you what, I think Greece is emerging in the food and wine um, industry. Huge. It, it It's just great food. I came home from there thinking I've just got to like tape my mouth shut and like stop eating. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. Honestly, yeah. just fresh Mediterranean wine. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay. So last question for you is what is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while traveling? Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm sure there's many stories, but yeah. Um, actually I think it was with my dad, like years back we were in, um, when river cruise just started, like in the early two thousands, we had been invited and it got canceled. And so we ended up going to Hungary and Austria, Poland and Prague. And Again, these are kind of emerging destinations like Hungary. You couldn't even use a credit card when we went in the early 2000s. It's changed so much. Um, but we were taking a train from Krakow over to Prague and it was about seven hours. And I remember just thinking I had read online like you could get robbed on this train. People could break into your cabin. You know, we're doing an overnight train. And I, I just felt so nervous. Like when those guards came on to check our passport, I remember just like hugging my passport. And I was thinking like, oh my God. I hope we don't, you know, get raped and mugged on this thing. And, and then we got off and at the Prague um, train station, I had bought a kids ticket because again, there wasn't a lot of English 20 years ago and Prague was just emerging as a really great destination. And um, so it was about 16 years ago, I had bought a youth ticket. And the next thing I know, I'm almost getting arrested. The police were there and they're like, wait, you're, you snuck on a train. You didn't buy the ticket. And I, I can't understand. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to like Prague prison. Yeah. So, you know, travel can be kind of scary sometimes, you know, and I, I've worked in a lot of humanitarian destinations because we do humanitarian work. And so I've worked in, a, you know, on the flip side, even though I'm on the luxury end, 
I've spent a lot of time in the garbage dumps of the world. And believe me, I, I feel like that's where the best people are is in the garbage dumps and, and the best life experiences. But I've had some pretty hairy experiences in, in some places that my mom would probably cry if she knew. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that is yeah. really terrifying. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because and just not understanding language. And I'm sure they were like speaking angrily and you're like, yeah. oh and like I had, I had cheated the system and so forth. So yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. But but, but but what crazy stories. I just want to thank you so much again for sharing just some of some of your business wisdom, you know, industry knowledge, but also just like a look into your travel experiences. Very, yeah. very fascinating. So thank you so much again. And thanks you everyone too for tuning into this episode of the Lounge with Travify Academy. And thank you so much again to our special guest, Angela, for joining us today. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. And we hope you enjoyed our conversation today and join us again. But for now, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight.